I'm Keith from Blacksburg, Virginia, and I've been a registered Republican voter since I turned 18, way back in 1975. I'd never voted Democratic until the 2016 election, when I held my nose and closed my eyes. I'd seen enough of Donald Trump's behavior during the Republican primary debates when his incivility toward his opponents predicted more of the same from the Oval Office toward friends and allies of the United States, along with anyone who might happen to disagree with him. Sadly, events have borne out my worst fears. I was also concerned about bestowing the title of the nation's chief executive, literally the CEO of the United States, on a man who had never held elected office or had any experience in public service. It's a lot like handing the controls of a 747 to a student pilot who has never soloed in a single-engine Cessna, and then being asked to get on the plane with him. Where Trump, the CEO of a large publicly traded corporation, his board of directors would have shown him the door long before now, based solely on his performance. As a Christian, I find Trump's personal behavior, demeaning women, bullying critics, and misappropriating federal officers to bulldoze peaceful demonstrators just to enable a photo op while holding a Bible aloft, offensive and the very antithesis of Jesus' teachings. As a veteran, I was angered first by Trump calling Senator John McCain a war hero only because he was captured, conveniently forgetting that McCain was imprisoned, tortured, and held in solitary confinement in North Vietnam, and then by Trump's belittling Gold Star parents at the 2016 Democratic Convention, Anyone who has walked among the rows of white crosses at the American Cemetery in Normandy knows that it's a sobering experience to contemplate those who made the ultimate sacrifice to the cause of freedom. For Donald Trump, who avoided the draft by a questionable diagnosis of bone spurs, to label these fallen heroes losers and suckers is an outrage and an affront to the dignity of all the men and women who have ever served in the United States Armed Forces. When I was commissioned, I swore an oath to defend and protect the Constitution of the United States from all enemies, both foreign and domestic. As Theodore Roosevelt once observed, a patriot's allegiance is to his country, not to the president. Donald Trump is a clear and present danger to the United States. As a physician, I was at first dumbfounded by Trump's dismissal of the coronavirus pandemic and then enraged by his refusal to accept any responsibility for his role in managing or mismanaging the crisis. He famously claimed that the coronavirus would disappear with the warm weather, and when it didn't, left the task of controlling the spread of the virus up to individual governors. That would be a little like FDR leaving the challenge of fighting the Japanese Navy up to the territorial governor of Hawaii after the attack on Pearl Harbor. Good luck with that. Only the federal government is big enough to have resources like the CDC, which Trump has repeatedly undermined, the FDA and NIH to marshal a coordinated response to covid only the federal government can activate the Defense Production Act to mass-produce not just the ventilators that Trump brags about, but the masks and test kits, which curiously weren't put into accelerated production, required to curb the spread of infections and in which are still so woefully in short supply. He has appointed officials not for their subject matter expertise, but instead based on how closely their views align with his. Case in point, Dr. Scott Atlas, a neuroradiologist, is now the chief medical advisor to the White House Coronavirus Task Force. He hasn't treated an infectious disease patient since he was an intern. Atlas's advocacy of herd immunity basically surrenders America to the virus allowing it to run unchecked throughout the country, which is exactly what's beginning to happen right now 
with new infections hitting nearly 100,000 last Friday alone. And Trump claims that we're rounding the corner on the pandemic. Who are you kidding? Over 230,000 deceased Americans, all because the president didn't take it seriously. He even mocks those who observe the most rudimentary of public health precautions, mask wearing. Donald Trump is frustrated because he can no longer bend reality to fit his narrative. He's finally met an opponent that he can't bully into submission. And it's not even a person. It's a fragment of ribonucleic acid, a virus. This isn't leadership. It's incompetence and irresponsibility. It's malfeasance of office. This reality horror show of gaslighting, slander, lies, and deceit has run far too long. It's time for The Apprentice to be canceled once and for all, and Donald Trump to hear the words that he so gleefully uttered to his contestants, You're fired!